The most important electric vehicle in the UK is not a medium-sized SUV. It's not a 600 horsepower sports crossover and it's not a cute super mini or a big 4x4. It's going to be something like this. The new Ford e-Transit. Think about it. The delivery van is the unsung hero of transportation. They are the backbone of all of those deliveries that you order online and then end up at your house. And they really suit electrification. There's no diesel idling as they wait to drop things off. They actually have no urban emissions and they all end up at a massive depot every night where they can be charged up. And electrification really suits van work. They're quiet, they're powerful, they're easy to drive. They can get into the low emission zones in cities for exactly zero pounds and they cost less to run and service. If they've got enough range, then they're a bit of a no brainer. Also, I just quite like driving vans. Are you a van enthusiast? Would you prefer an EV, and by that I mean an electric van, or would you rather stick to diesel? Let us know in the comments and please do the usual and like and subscribe. Now, working out what makes a good electric delivery van is obviously a little bit different to what we usually do, trying to work out what makes a good electric family car. But we shall attempt to get to the heart of things. You can have the new e-Transit in three lengths and two heights, including a bare chassis for sticking specialist equipment onto, a double cab setup for extra people and various other configurations. There are bits of blue on the grill that mark it out as electric, but you're not going to be overwhelmed by space-age transitness, if it ain't broken all that. Luckily, the e-Transit doesn't skimp on being practical. It'd be a pretty rubbish van if it wasn't. Now, obviously, a lot of the features depend on which one you go for, but on this one, there's a sliding door on this side and rear doors that open properly wide to reveal between 9.5 and, and just over 15 metres cubed of load space. Big enough for an echo. Note for edit, put an echo, 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 in there, 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 there. Please, please, please. The battery, just like an electric car, is mounted really low under the floor, out of the way down here. So the van should have a nicely low centre of gravity. And the heavy duty rear suspension has been completely redesigned. And now it's fully independent, which means the Transit should handle well, whether it's loaded or unloaded, which is always really useful. Depending on which variant you have, it can carry up to 1,758 kilograms of things. There's also the option of a thing called Pro Power On Board, which is basically this little box here. Now, in electric car terms, we probably know that as vehicle to load system. So essentially, it's a set of plugs that's in the back of the transit that can deliver up to 2.3 kilowatts of power. Now, that's enough to charge your laptop, run a bandsaw or, well, pretty much any other power tool. That's handy if you're on site all day without access to mains power. And they've got flaps. Up front, and it is way more sophisticated than the old Transit I used to drive around in. I mean, in front of you, it has a set of analog dials, which is very nice. But then in the middle, it's got a 12 inch touchscreen, which runs Ford Sync 4 latest operating system, which is really clear, easy to use and really nice. And after that, it's got loads of car like gadgetry. So it's got Apple CarPlay, it's got Android Auto, it's got Lane Keep Assist, it's got a heated quick clear windscreen, which a lot of Fords have, which is really useful in uh, cold weather. It's got standard heated seats. It's even got a nice little shelf here, which allows you to rest your elbow on and give you a proper transit driving position. And after that, it just feels a bit cleverer than transit's used to. So there's tons and tons of storage. There's big door bins. There's a cup holder here. In the middle, it's a rotary gear selector, which is really useful. If you're having to maneuver this thing in a town, you just flick it back and forth and the drive is instant. And then it's got another cup holder there. It's got uh, a little cubby hole between these seats here, three seats up front. There's a little slot down here, which would be good for workbooks. And then these shelves up here are really good for paperwork. It feels like someone's really thought about this vehicle in terms of how you'd use it day to day, because when it comes down to it, if you're having to put a shift in, in this transit, the more comfortable and cosseting it is, the handier it is to use, the less stressful it is to use, the better off you'll be when you have to put in a 12 hour shift. They've thought about this van and I think it really works. Okay, so the plastics are a bit industrial, but it's a transit van. It wouldn't work if it was all plush. If you've got a fleet of more than five transits, there's four telematics that you can spy, I mean, check on your gang, 
monitor the vehicle's health and do all sorts of other stuff so you never waste time. And there's the Ford Pass Pro app for your phone so that you can do loads of stuff remotely. Forgotten to lock the van? You can do it from home. And yes, there's remote start and preconditioning too, so a transit is ready to go when you are. And as for that battery, we're talking about a 68 kilowatt hour unit that could see up to 196 miles of range, depending on what you do with it and which version of transit you have. Ford consulted with delivery companies to see what an acceptable level of range was, and they said more than 150 miles a day. So the transit should have every eventuality covered especially if the van spends most of its time in town, where it will be most efficient. 11.3 kilowatt AC charging means that you can slow charge at a depot in just over 8 hours, or a home wall box overnight. And there's decent faster DC charging at 115 kilowatts via the nose-mounted charging point, which should see 15-80% to in just over half an hour on the appropriate public unit. Customers also have access to the Ford Pass charging network, which really helps when you're out and about. There's only one bill for a start. This is not like any transit van that I have ever driven. It doesn't rattle, smell of diesel, or somebody else's lunch. Okay, so that might be a little bit of personal prejudice. It is really, really easy to drive. It's just stop and go, put it in gear. It's smooth, it's quiet for a van. It's genuinely impressive. It rides really, really well. Look, I'm just tooling around Barcelona now, and it's actually quite relaxing. This is not a small van, and yet I'm quite chilled out with it. Now, the most powerful transit has 265 brake horsepower and about 317 pounds-feet of torque. This is the less powerful one with about 183. And because the motor and all the electrical gubbins are actually packaged out in the back by the rear axle, this van is rear-wheel drive like they used to be back in the day, which means in theory it would drift. We're not going to be testing that today because we're serious journalists. There are different driving modes, just like an electric car that you might be used to, and there is normal, which is just for normal everyday driving, you're just bombing around. There's slippery, and that is for when it's really horrible out, it might be a bit windy or it's raining. That's really useful if you've got a big load on the back and you want to be as calm and as gentle as possible. But then there's Eco. Now Eco is just like the mode that you have in another electric car. It will limit acceleration, top speed and the air conditioning. Now Ford reckons that you can get between 8 and 10% more range when you're using the Eco mode. Obviously the van will be a little bit slower, it will be a little bit less quick to react, but it will give you that extra bit of range if you need to get back to the depot to charge up. It's also got a really handy turning circle and good vision. The interesting thing about the Transit is that Ford really has thought about the whole ecosystem that surrounds running vans for business, recognising that a big switch to electric is actually quite daunting. But the fact remains there are loads of advantages to electric vans. While the government grants for electric cars have snipped a bit, commercial electric grants are still relatively generous. The smallest electric vans are eligible for a £5,000 subsidy, while the biggest can get up to £16,000 off, and that's not to be ignored, especially if you run a fleet. Although, there is a little loophole which means that you can't get the discounts if you order more than a 1,000 vans. Plus, electric vans are predicted to be up to 40% cheaper to service than the equivalent diesel, and far cheaper to charge up than to refuel, especially if powered by low-cost renewable tariff back at the depot rather than a public charger. Ford seems pretty confident there's a 3-year 60,000 mile warranty on the van and an 8-year 100,000 mile warranty on the battery. Now UK government regulations state that you're not allowed to drive anything over 3.5 tonnes on a standard UK driving licence, which means that the 4.25 tonne e-transit would be ineligible. But an interesting loophole means that because the e-transit is considered alternatively fuelled, you can actually drive it on a standard, normal UK driving licence. That's really handy. The big news is that even though the base e-transit starts at £42,695, which isn't cheap, it is a lot cheaper than any other equivalent electric van. The thing is, once you take into account the total cost of ownership over the course of its life, these vans work hard for a living and they're looking like a really solid choice. In a really practical, boring and unsexy way, electric delivery vehicles are going to underpin what it means to transition to electric. And I think the e-transit is a bit of a quiet game changer. Now where's my bacon sandwich? <laughs>